Global greenhouse gas emissions from human activities are at their highest levels in human history. But there is increasing evidence of climate action, and the average annual rate of growth in global emissions has slowed in the last decade. The next few years are critical. Without immediate and deep emissions reductions in all sectors, limiting warming to one and a half degrees Celsius will be beyond reach. The IPCC's latest report on climate change mitigation shows that there are options available in every sector that can at least halve emissions by 2030. What the report shows that if we carry on as we are, uh, we won't be able to limit global warming to 2 degrees, never mind uh, 1.5. But we do find signs of progress. I mean, half the world's emissions are now covered by climate laws and, uh, and policies, and we're seeing the falling cost of renewable energy and big take-ups. It is beginning to make a difference. So if we look over all the sectors that we, we cover in the report, we can find options everywhere for reducing emissions, both by technology and by behavioural change. And when you add it all up, you could see the, the capacity to cut emissions by about a half by 2030, but it would need very prompt and uh, ambitious action for that to actually happen. The energy sector accounts for about one third of all emissions. An increasing range of policies and laws have enhanced energy efficiency. And since 2010, there have been sustained decreases in cost with reductions of 85% for solar energy and batteries and 55% for wind power. Major transitions are required in this sector to reduce emissions. To reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the energy system, major changes are needed. We would use far less fossil fuel, meaning that fossil fuels remain in work. Instead, we would use low emission energy sources such as wind and solar, and alternative energy carriers such as hydrogen and sustainable biofuels. Moreover, we would use far less energy than today by improving energy efficiency and promoting energy conservation. Agriculture, forestry, and other land use contribute just over a fifth of greenhouse gas emissions. This sector can not only provide large-scale greenhouse gas emissions reductions, but can also remove and store carbon dioxide at scale. This report shows that to avoid climate change, we have to conserve ecosystem and improve food system. We have to restore, protect, and sustainably manage carbon-rich ecosystems like forest and grassland, and we have to reduce greenhouse gas intensity of food production system. But also, we have to curve and reduce food waste and loss and shift to more sustainable and healthy diets. All these options can mitigate 8 to 14 gigatons of CO2 per year for now up to 2050 at relatively low cost. This is the first IPCC assessment to include a chapter on demand services and social aspects of mitigation, looking at how a combination of effective policies, improved infrastructure and technologies leading to behavioral change has the potential to enable emissions reductions. This report shows for the first time the importance of the social aspects of demand and the huge potential it provides in reducing emissions. It is clear now that human behavior is the center of the problem and also the solution if associated with relevant policies, adapted infrastructures and if technologies are available. Climate change affects everybody, but 10% of the richest people are responsible of 40% of the emissions. So they need to question the lifestyles, cultural norms, and eventually change them. Cities and other urban areas where most of the world's population lives are responsible for more than two thirds of global greenhouse gas emissions, either through the production of goods and services or those that are transported to cities. Buildings also play a crucial role in reducing emissions. 
What this assessment shows is that both the building sector and cities can go to net zero carbon dioxide emissions towards the middle of the century. Nevertheless, the next decade is critical because both of these involve infrastructure that will commit us to emitting in certain ways. In cities, the most important areas of action are designing cities better to co-locate jobs and homes together and also to enable better transportation systems where we actually can perhaps do active transport, as well as electrification, and finally removing or st and storing carbon dioxide in the urban environment, for example, in trees and parks. Buildings can uh, also help. For example, we show that in most climates by today, we can do net zero energy and net zero carbon uh, buildings. In developed part of the world, Retrofit is more important, whether, whereas in developing countries it is more important to focus on appliances and um, supplying the energy in clean ways, for example, through clean electricity. The ways that we use transport, whether for travel or to transport goods, offers substantial potential for emissions reductions. But this depends on decarbonizing the power sector. Electric vehicles combined with low or zero emissions electricity offer the greatest potential, and advances in battery technologies could assist in the electrification of trucks. For shipping and aviation, which are harder to decarbonize, low emission hydrogen and biofuels offer alternatives to going electric. These options, combined with solutions in other areas, like cities and reducing demand, offer us a way forward in the transport sector. A quarter of global emissions comes from the industry sector, where achieving net zero is challenging. Getting there would require new production processes and using low and zero greenhouse gas electricity, hydrogen, and, where necessary, carbon capture and storage. さん業部門は2000年以降他のどの部門の排出量よりも急速に増加してきていて、完成的な排出量つまり発電や熱を作る時の排出量などまで含めると全排出量の34%という主要な排出源です。社会の中で利用している製品の量は一人当たりで見
in the case of the developing countries taking into account uh, the limited capacity they have in terms of finance, in terms of technology and in terms of institutional uh, capacity. The situation is much more difficult in the case of the less developed countries. Accelerated climate action is critical to sustainable development. Climate change increasingly threatens the health and livelihoods of people around the globe and the health of our planet. In all countries, actions to limit global warming that result in wider benefits to society can increase the pace, depth, and breadth of emissions reductions. In this report, we show how mitigation goes hand in hand with achieving many of the sustainable development goals. For example, if we look at the sustainable development goal, green and blue infrastructure, we see that green roofs and facades, networks of parks and open spaces, wetlands and urban agriculture not only absorb and store carbon, but at the same time achieve many other sustainable development goals. They can reduce pressure on urban sewer systems, reduce flood risk and heat island effects, and also deliver health benefits from reduced air pollution. We have the tools and know-how required to limit warming and secure a livable future. Regulatory and market instruments and policies play a crucial role in strengthening the response. More ambitious emissions reductions require joint up policymaking across government at different levels and through international cooperation. The IPCC is the gold standard for climate science. Our reports provide governments and policymakers with the most up-to-date knowledge on climate change that helps inform their decision-making on climate-related policies. This assessment cycle has been the most intensive in IPCC's history. Not only due to the high number of IPCC reports, but also because we had to find innovative ways to adapt to the challenges of the pandemic. The pandemic didn't stop the work of IPCC. And together, we delivered. Climate change is the result of more than a century of unsustainable energy and land use, lifestyles and patterns of consumption and production. This report shows how taking action now can move us toward a fairer, more livable world.